while they were all amazed at his every deed, Jesus said to his disciples, Pay attention to what I am telling you. The Son of Man is to be handed over to men. But they did not understand this saying. Its meaning was hidden from them, so that they should not understand it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel says that at the moment when Jesus says this, he was surrounded by success, immersed in success, aims general admiration. How could the apostles understand that he was speaking to them about the coming crucifixion, if at the moment everyone was applauding him? Now, the Christians, the Catholic who lived, who have lived in a type of society where the majority was Catholic, even an important part was practicing Catholic, where the social pressure was against those who did not go to Mass, especially in the villages, places of few inhabitants, where everyone knew each other. How were they going to understand? How were they going to understand? Everything has changed so much, so quickly. Changes always happen, but they are usually more slower. Everything has changed so quickly that what was bad a short time ago, today it's right. Not only in this it's considered good, but it is considered a right. Many of us are witnesses of that. Abortion was a crime. Today it is a right. And this is simply an example. Very recently, whoever did not go to Mass was thrown upon. Whoever did not marry in a church was thrown it upon. Whoever did not baptize his children was thrown it up upon. Whoever did not take these children to catechesis for their first communion was thrown it upon. And it was unthinkable that a person died and a funeral was not held in his soul. Unthinkable, regardless of the fate of the person or even of the children. There was a just social pressure in favor of religion behavior, although sometimes the behavior was hypocritical. There was a pressure that the behavior was accepted, so as not to be subjected to that pressure by some. Today it is just the opposite. If someone had been told, in this pain in which I was born, and surely in other countries. It is exactly the opposite, and surely, in other countries, it is exactly the same and afterwards. If someone had told them, if they had told my parents, or if they had told me, when I was a teenager, that what we are living now could happen, I could have been as surprised as the apostles. The disciples were surprised when the Lord in full success said, They will crucify me, he said, but what are you talking about? How dark these words are, and yet the Lord prepared his, his own, although they did not allow themselves to be prepared. He prepared his own ways for the cross. Are you prepared for the cross? Because being prepared for for success, at least theoretically, it is easy. In practice, it is not so easy because many in success is where they think. They fill themselves with vices. Well, but at least in practice, preparing for success, for the applause of the world, is supposedly easy. Preparing for a failure, preparing for persecution, Preparing for criticism, preparing to go against the title, preparing for the martyrdom. Are we prepared for that? Many times I ask myself this question, many times, and I don't think of the martyrdom of blood. I don't think of it. I am sure that it is painful, as it is sometimes is a martyrdom, 
preceded by terrible tortures. But I am sure that God gives the grace at the moment to endure those tortures and to be faithful, a grace of course of an extraordinary kind. I think of other martyrdoms, the martyrdom of persecution by taking away your honor, the martyrdom they make suffer having to give up their job or being put off in that job for being faithful to their conscience, the martyrdom that our Catholic teenagers suffer. We are perhaps at this moment the ones who are suffering the most persecution because they need to be in a gang, in a group. And in that group, if you are Catholic, if you are practicing Catholic, if you have some strange, straight criteria about sexual behavior, in that group, they generally do not accept you. The martyrdom that some or many wives endure, perhaps some husbands too, because they want to lead a marriage life according to what the church teaches, and their spouse is not willing to do so. The martyrdom, that is not a blood, but it is a very frequent martyrdom. Are we prepared for that? Are we prepared? To say to Jesus, for you, I love you so much, Jesus. I want to love you so much. Even if I love you so much, less than you deserve. I want to love you so much, so much that I am willing to suffer that criticism, that post postponement, that martyrdom for you. And we are willing not only to do that, but also to accept it as Him. Not only for Him, but as Him. Many times I ask myself this question when I defend the doctrine, when I face and take on enemies from outside the church and from inside the church. When I feel criticized, Josh, I ask myself, do I do it for Christ? And I ask myself, do I do it as Christ? For Christ, do I love him so much as to accept that, as to accept what comes up on me for him? But not only that, do I do it as Him? For Christ and like Christ. For Christ, out of love for Christ, accepting persecution like Christ. That is, turning the other cheek, not returning evil from evil. Paying for our enemies, praying for our enemies, saying what needs to be said, always with love. Giving opportunities to those who say, they want to convert. Even if you even if we have to the suspicion that it is not true. For Christ, defending the faith, for Christ, but as Christ. Also as Christ, defending the faith. The Christ who died on the cross, but the Christ who died forgiving his enemies. The, the Christ who taught us that. We have to forgive because we need to be forgiven. The, lo the Lord's words prepared us for the cross. Even if we do not want to understand it, they have always prepared us for the cross. Let us ask the Lord to fill our hearts with love, with love for Him, so that for Him we may be ready for that cross. Even if it is not the only of bloodshed, but so that we may also embrace that cross as He embraced it, without hatred, without rancor, without violence, without aggressiveness, being continuously ready to love and to forgive our enemies. Amen.